Hi, and welcome to the Grandview Heights Public Library Adult Book Talks. We post these on Fridays, the first and third Friday of every month. My name is Lloyd Labadie. I'm the page and volunteer supervisor here at the library. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, three great novels that uh, actually kind of tie in with this holiday season in some way, shape, or form. So, let's get to it. Uh, the first book I'm talking to you about is uh, Frank Herbert's Dune. Um, really, this book needs no introduction. Um, it is a literary classic. It's on countless bestseller lists, uh, countless, you know, must-read lists. Um, recently, I, the third adaptation uh, of this book into a movie has come out in theaters, although the movie that recently came out is only the first half of the book. Hence why it's called Dune Part 1. Um, it is the most faithful adaptation of the movie. Um, of course, if you'd like to see the other adaptations, we have them available here at the library. Um, anyway, the premise of this book, written by Frank Herbert, is that, uh, you know, we're in far future, the year 10,000-something. I forget the last digits, but the known universe, we've kind of gone to a uh, castle system in that it is ruled by an emperor and below him are governing houses. And um, what kind of humanity has reached its peak in development. I mean, there are even humans called Mintats, which essentially have trained their minds to be supercomputers, just like, um, you know, the computers we use every day or our smart devices. But um, anyway, the one planet that the entire book revolves around is Arrakis. And on this planet, there is a element known as spice, and you can only find spice on this planet. And of course, spice makes humanity able to reach these um, high levels of evolution. Um, also makes space travel possible um, almost instantaneously, or at least, you know, cutting it down by definitely weeks and years. So it is highly coveted, and of course, whoever controls the spice controls the universe. And uh, so in this story, of course, there is a uh, plot of war, you know, behind the scenes between the noble houses, you know, who's going to take over uh, control of the spice. Uh, of course, we have the local population of uh, the Fremen of the planet Arrakis, and they are caught in this battle uh, between the noble houses and kind of entwined in all this is also a prophecy uh, about there's a... Uh, a male who will come forth and usher the known universe into this new age of enlightenment and bring peace. And of course, it's all set to start on the planet Arrakis. Uh, as you can see, the book is very thick. The print is small. Do not let that discourage you. This is a phenomenal book. Um, you know, just read a few chapters uh, at a time, maybe read one chapter a day, but it is great. I cannot recommend it enough. It is a book that uh, changed my life when I was younger. Our next book definitely uh, takes a turn to a different genre. We are going from science fiction all the way into kind of, uh, in a way, horror. Uh, the Final Girls, uh, the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. Um, I discovered this book uh, earlier this summer. Finally got a chance to read it. It is great. Um, he is really becoming a name. He's best known for uh, a book that came out a few a year ago, the Southern Book uh, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I know that's a tongue twister, but this one is great. He what he does in this is uh, the final girl, you know, the girl that always survives in the horror films. He says, "Well, what happens after the film? What happens to him?" And so in this book, we explore actually a group of final girls and how they dealt with the aftermath of their tragedy, uh, whether they capitalized, you know, with social media and the movie business upon the unfortunate tragedy that happened to them, or, you know, they quietly went into a life of um, privacy. And um, the twist is all of a sudden, even though these girls meet and they do keep, uh, they guard their privacy carefully, all of a sudden there's somebody who's coming after them and uh, picking them off one by one. So of course, this, I say it's a horror at the beginning of this, but it's also a mystery because you have to find out 
who is coming after them, why are they coming after them, uh, how, how do all of them connect aside from just being final girls, things like that. He really does a good job at uh, integrating um, you know, classic horror genres that we've seen in books and movies as well as what would happen if these things were in the real world. You know, these girls have, uh, they need support, they have PSD uh, and uh, just a number of things. And it was just really good and I really enjoyed every minute of it. So, highly recommend it. The last one clearly ties into the, the Yule season and definitely takes a different turn. Uh, instead of reading a book about Santa, I read the other iconic figure of the holiday season, Krampus the Yule Lord uh, by Brahm. Brahm originally came to fame as a fantasy artist, primarily through doing book covers as well as Dungeons and Dragons creation and other role-playing games. Um, but uh, after a while, he decided to take his turn at writing. And I really have to say, he really does his research very well in this. He researched the mythology of who Krampus is, who Santa Claus is, and other Yuletide um, mythological characters and really ties them all into streams line their origin and ties them into everyday people. Uh, starts out we have a just a single dad in West Virginia and he's just trying to make ends meet and you know just get that doll his daughter really wants for Christmas and of course uh, his ex-wife is uh, tied in with the rich guy in town and he stumbles across Krampus. I don't want to say how because I don't want to give too much away, but realizes who Krampus really is, what Krampus stands for, um, and how this all comes about. So if you are interested in holiday, especially Christmas holiday mysteries, as well as um, mythology, you know, history of mythological characters, I highly recommend this book. Um, it looks a little scary on the cover, but uh, it's really not, and you really find out toward the end that uh, Krampus is there to punish the wicked as well as reward the good. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I uh, hope you check out these recommendations. Uh, come back and view some of our other videos we have here. And, of course, all these books you can get here at the library here at Grandview Heights. I hope you've enjoyed. Take care.